Peace and blessings to each and every one of you in our listening audience. This is Karima Medina Bilal, an instructor. Benjamin Bilal. Yes, and we are here in our, today's Wednesday, the day after election day, and we wanted to bring you in on some of the things we're watching that we had some thoughts and commentary about that perhaps might interest you. This is a, a flagship for us. It's the start of something that we hope you will be interested in enough to want to continue. And do please let us know in the comments uh, whether or not this is something that piques your interest. Instructor, how about you? You wanted to start us off with a Quranic reading. Uh, yeah. In light of uh, much of the controversy that had taken place in the last uh, part of the bid for the election for president of the United States, one of the hot topics, as all of you should know by now, was the subject of abortion and abortion rights, um, which uh, became somewhat of a hot topic uh, because um, of the many women who uh, were very, very protective of what is called the women's rights. And we'll talk about the difference between the abortion issue and the women's rights issue in just a moment as we get into the conversation, but I wanted to read a verse from the Quran regarding the idea of abortion. I've heard several videos, and we'll be privy to one today, that are dealing with the issue of abortion, but from a Christian viewpoint. And I wanted to make sure that those of us who read the Quran are aware of where these topics are in the Quran itself. This comes from Surah 17, Ayat 31. Surah is somewhat like chapter and ayat is somewhat like verse. So keep that in mind if you're not uh, a reader of Arabic or a Muslim. And Allah says in the Quran, quote, Kill not your children for fear of want. We shall provide sustenance for them as well as for you. Verily, the killing of them is a great sin. A great sin sin. And when the Quran says we shall do something, it's referring to not only Allah, but all of the things that Allah has command over in his uh, glorious creation. Whenever Allah wants to choose to bring about the manifestation of that thing he's speaking to, he, he uses the phrase we in that context. So I'm going to let uh, Karima begin. Uh, I was, as a Muslim and as a, a woman, I was thoroughly offended, thoroughly offended, and even somewhat confused at the passion with which uh, Ms. Harris's campaign doted on the concept of abortion. They made it seem as though uh, the ability to get pregnant or being pregnant or having a baby was somehow an infringement on your personhood and your right to exist as a woman. They made it seem as though a, a baby was a fetus, as they called it. And we, we watched endless numbers of content creators who would go around interviewing younger women, and to my surprise and horror, uh, mature women, women 40 and, and better, all of whom thought that a fetus was something different than a baby and that you could kill it with impunity. Hmm? And all of them seem to go past the basic, uh, what I would call glaring fact that you don't have to get pregnant in 2024, ladies. There is no reason why a woman in 2024 should be pregnant if she doesn't want to be. Oh, the Democratic campaign just harped and harped and harped on a woman's right to choose and uh, your body, my body, my choice. So allow me this basic rant right here. I did OBGYN for greater than 15 years, so I can tell you a couple of things. And for us men who don't know what OBGA is. Uh, OB, obstetrics and gynecology. Okay. Obstetrics <laughs> and gynecology. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. Yeah. So, so basically... First fact is it's actually rather difficult to get pregnant. A woman is fertile 
once in a cycle for approximately 18 to 24 hours. A man's sperm, however, lives for three to five days. So there's a whole method called the Billings method or also the rhythm method of pregnancy prevention that is built around the recognition of those facts. Now, if you think that uh, I'm wrong in that, ask a woman who's been trying to get pregnant. Huh? There's it's it's such an issue that they have tests now to confirm when you're in ovulation phase, which is a, sh a relatively short period of time, somewhere between day seven and day fifteen of a woman's menstrual cycle, which is approximately twenty eight days. So we're talking about seven to eight days in a cycle where the during which time the egg will escape. Uh, and it'll be alive for 18 to 24 hours. And the goal here is to keep enough sperm in the vagina so that one of the little sweethearts, and there's a million of them ejaculated at a time, will actually link up with the egg, make the journey through the vagina, through the cervix, into the tubes where it generally meets the egg. Now, that's a very quick lesson in, uh, in gynecology and how a person gets pregnant. So... The people who come out, abortion, 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 is as if a woman does not have the right to choose whether or not to have intercourse, or whether or not to use something to prevent pregnancy. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. Number one, you can just not have sex during that time. It takes just a little bit of, just the tiniest bit of effort and self-awareness, body awareness, to know when that occurs. And especially if it's with somebody who you're not even really committed to. Somebody you're not committed. <laughs> what astonishes me is this whole culture of sex without responsibility, which totally ignores the fact that sex is by its nature, biologically speaking, an act of procreation. They have it framed now in this era of licentiousness and wickedness and uh, lust and exploitation of your lower passions, that you can just do what you want. You don't have to think about the consequences of it, but there's a universal law called the law of reciprocity, excuse me, yeah, the law of reciprocity, mm -hmm. which says what you reap, you will sow. What you send out is going to come back to you. I think some people call that karma. Karma, for sure. And then there's another universal law, which means it doesn't matter whether you believe it, or whether or not you subscribe to it or think it operates in your life, it's universal, right? Just like gravity. You don't have to believe in gravity to be affected by it. And that says that it's the law of expediency, which means I'm going to do what I want to do or what seems to be most convenient at this time. And then the second law that's a corollary of that, corollary of that which is the law of unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. So that's the backdrop. So this person's campaign was totally built on a premise of victimization. Oh, you poor woman, you had nothing to do with getting pregnant. Now, we're not talking about rape. We're not talking about incest. Mm -hmm. That occurs 1% maybe of all unintended pregnancies. The rest of that is failure to take responsibility. Get angry with me if you want. By all means, I invite you to put your comments there. I'll be happy to engage with you on this. Happy in, in my, I, I'm 72 years old. And in this, in 72 years ago, uh, 20 years ago, let me see. So that would 20 years ago would be 2000. Let's go back to the sixties even before when the pill first came out. Prior to that, you could make a good story for unintended pregnancies. And that pill. And the, the, the pill pregnant. came out. When the pill came out. But now you have. My pill. What pill are you referring the, to? The for, birth for some of the younger folks who might okay, be listening. The, the contraceptive, the oral contraceptive pill, the birth control pill, as they say, which chemically prevents a woman from ovulating. So basic physiology, a woman has to release an egg. The egg has to connect with the sperm. The sperm has to fertilize the egg and the egg has to implant in order for there to be a successful pregnancy. 
Okay, real basic lesson in physiology, you just got it in 30 seconds, mm -hmm. right? So obviously any method then that is to be effective is that you keep the sperm away from the egg. Huh? Now we're talking here, it has to be said, it's unusual to have to bring it up, but we're talking about penis, vagina, sex. I won't go any further than that. Penis to vagina, sex. Any of the other stuff is another conversation. So back to this whole abortion issue. If you, if a person has sex, they're making a decision. That is, you're having sex, penis, vagina, male, female. You're either making a decision to make a baby, in which case you use nothing. You want one, use nothing. You don't want one, use something. The only two choices you have, if you're going to have penis, vagina, sex. That's it. Now, there'll be some who argue you shouldn't have to do that. Speak to nature. Speak to God about that. That is the way procreation occurs. So there's no victimization here. Absent rape, absent incest. There is use something to prevent pregnancy or don't use anything and take the chance of becoming pregnant. I mean, there's at least five safe, proven, effective methods of pregnancy prevention. I won't go into them here for the sake of time, but just know that a woman does not have to get pregnant if she does not want to in 2024. Doesn't matter if you don't have any money, you can do that. Second thing is the discussion as to, they use the nice medical terminology, pregnancy termination mm. or abortion. And what you're really doing is killing. You're killing something which, had you not intervened, would have lived the majority of the time. That is what abortion is. The people in the Democratic side were running this whole thing about, oh, in, if Trump gets elected, a woman's going to lose her right to choose. So I would ask you, choose what? Mm -hmm. You don't want a baby, use something. You want a baby, use nothing. And let's just say, let's just say that you slip up. You get caught slipping. It can happen to anybody under the influence of base passions. <laughs> right? They have something called the morning after pill. Take it within 72 hours of the uh, unprotected encounter and it prevents implantation the majority of the time. And may I insert this idea that in the Quran- Did you just say insert the yes, idea? Yes, I did. Okay. Freudian slip. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> in the Quran, Allah speaks about those base passions uh, by using the word ahwa. And ahwa uh, simply means those urges and those desires that are registering in the lowest part of your emotionality. You know, when you desire something and you and and your desires just overcome you, again, no pun intended, right? But Allah says about those base desires that there is, and I want you to take this seriously if you're readers of the Quran, especially, that he says there's no worse beast, that's the word that is translated into, on earth than the one who allows his or her lower passions to become their God. Chew on that for a minute. That's big. No worse beast than the one who allows his or her lowest lusts and passions, unchecked passions, to become the thing that they give the majority of their devotional attention to. I don't want to mention any cases in the news right now, but there are glaring examples of people who have allowed their ahua to become their gods. Well, Case in point, uh, there's the base passions of lust, but this whole campaign as the um, anchors on the different channels were dissecting, the whole campaign was built upon exploiting the base passion of hatred. Another base passion, that's right. Hatred, anger, mm -hmm. right? So, so it, it, 
this whole thing is it this whole previous scenario this whole campaign election lead up is really a psychological study now the video that you're going to be watching takes it to another level the spiritual level i did want to bring up one other thing part of the campaign rhetoric was that you a woman would lose her there were two things a woman would lose bodily well they don't say bodily autonomy anymore no, they right? stopped saying that they stopped yeah. saying that when they began pushing mandated vaccines because mm -hmm. mm. if you have the right if it's my body my choice then i should have the right to de to decide whether or not you inject me with something and they took that away especially so they, something experimental especially they, something experimental unproven and subsequently proven to be dangerous sure and they right. still project that narrative uh, it particularly bothered me that uh, we of the Muslim faith, of these, we of the Islamic faith, these we who purport to follow the Quran, are making that distinction because not everybody who says they're a Muslim is a student and a, uh, a person who follows the Quran. Come at me if you want to. I'll be glad to debate you on that. There's a difference in the Quran between the Muslim, the one who believes, and the Muslim. He can tell you that better than I. I've told you that many times. <laughs> but moving forward, moving forward, how can you be or say that you are a Muslim and someone who follows the Quran and be in favor of a candidate that A, supports abortion and the murder of children? Remember, Prophet Muhammad, the revelation came to Prophet Muhammad to remedy the practice of the pagan Arabs of burying baby girls alive because they were born female instead of male. Number one, uh, kill not your children out of fear of poverty. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm in process of rising the corp ascending the corporate ladder and to get pregnant at this time will interrupt my ascent. So this, this pregnancy is inconvenient. I might lose my job. I might lose my my the great salary that I, or the prestige that I'm looking forward to. Allah says Allah will provide for you as He provides it provided provide for them as He provided for you. It's in the Quran. You just heard it. So the glorification of taking life, and Allah is the one who decrees who gets pregnant or who does not. Oh dispute that, I can tell you 20 years, six, 15 to 20 years of obstetrics and gynecology, IVF, in vitro fertilization, only works 50% of the time under the best of circumstances. Take the egg out of the woman, fertilize it in a dish, man's sperm, take it and implant it back into her during her most, most fertile time proven by laboratory analysis. It'll still only work in the best of clinics 50% of the time. Wow. And then there are those teenagers who in the backseat of a car are, are rubbing up against each other. He does not penetrate. He ejaculates onto her private parts. And the little sweethearts swim up there and pregnancy ensues. I actually took care of a teenager who was in fact virgin at the time that uh, she delivered. Actually, she's probably she was at that time still a virgin because she delivered by cesarean. What? Mm. Allah is the one, God, the creator, the source creator, is the one mm. who decrees who gets pregnant and when. Life and death are in the hands of the creator, despite the best of technology. So these people ran a, a, a nasty game, mm. a nasty game that woman's rights, woman's right to choose. What you're gonna hear in this video is the conflation, the mixing of women's rights and of the right to abortion. Women's rights, and remember I'm a child of the 50s, women's right, the right to vote. Prophet Muhammad, the right to own property, the rights of inheritorship, the rights of support after divorce. These are basic women's rights. Abortion is not a right. 
by contrast, the developing baby has a right to live, has the rights of a human being. Argue if you want. There are people who would not take their purebred dog and abort the puppies. Wow. And mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. Tim Tim Walls, the vice presidential candidate for the Democrats, uh, was a governor of the state in which full term abortions are allowed. There are seven seven states in the United States that allow abortion up to and after birth. Mm. Tell me that's after birth. after birth. Tell me that's not murder. There are places that will do abortion eight months, seven months. We, we now have the tech to save babies that are delivered prematurely at 28 weeks, high rates of survival, but you want to abort at that point. And then people do not understand what you're actually doing when an abortion is performed. As a GYN, person who's practiced GYN for many years, I can tell you it's horrible. Mm. It's absolutely awful. So uh, it's, it's and, and they, they say it as if it's the kind of thing you can do just like you go and, and remove a tampon. It is not. It is not. So moving past that, to the video so that you can see what we see and we will stop it and make commentary as we see is appropriate. And then you can let us know in the comments and in the chat, the comments below, the comments below what you think of what we're saying. Stay Here we right. go. Rights advocates in Ohio <clears throat> erupted. In celebration Tuesday night, after the state voted to protect access to the procedure. I was crying tears of complete joy and shock and just overwhelmed. I was just overwhelmed that we can actually affect change. So, this so here's the first thing I want to call your attention to. They make it seem as if nobody was able to get an abortion or was going to be banned. Right now, in the majority of states in the union, you can get, a person can get an abortion up to six weeks. So there, that was fear tactics there. It was as if somehow if, if Harris had gotten uh, elected, it was going to be that you had free access that you don't have now. You do. That's the thing. This, I mean, did you see the one dude? He was like, yeah. People, people crying tears people of crying, joy tears over of joy. abortions. And that worries me. Now, now I understand women's rights, but these people are celebrating killing babies. killing babies okay well you what you understand that that's not part of the women's rights right well, so i need i need i need to understand but you do I, understand that the killing of babies is not the celebration of women's rights okay i'm women's, assuming women's well, right is the right to vote the right to have a job the right to be paid the same that a man is paid the right to be able to go out and start your business or be whatever but it is not the right to take a life, another life. That's but that's not how it's spoken about or marketed. Well, it's not right, but it's but maybe it needs to be better defined as to what, you know. I think that's intentional, right? It is. That's the propaganda. This is women's rights. So let me let me say this, right? In the Bible, there is a God named Moloch, lowercase g. Moloch is spoken about in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, and also in the New Testament, New Covenant. He's talked about in both covenants. Moloch was the God in the Bible that was assigned to kill your children as a sacrifice. Maybe you wanted more money. Maybe you wanted love. Maybe you wanted fame or fortune. You sacrificed this child. Well, you may say, well, Tiffany, I'm not doing it for this. Well, if you said, I can't afford to have this baby and you had an abortion, you sacrificed it for the money. If you So good point that they're making. However, the Muslims who are listening, I want you to realize that there is no character named Moloch in the Quran, but there's the equivalent in action. Very often in the Quran, Allah is speaking to issues that exist in previous scriptures like the Bible, the Christian Bible, the Jewish Torah, and even other um, more ancient scriptures. But he's not speaking through the same symbolism that other religions use when they bring you characters like Moloch and so forth. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, uh, just Google the word M-O-L-E-C-H. M-O-L-O-C-H. M O L, pardon me. M O L E C H. Molech. O C H. O C H. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mola. Mola. <laughs> All right. That's your research. Now we're gonna we're not gonna do your research for you, but it'll do you good to look those things up on your own. Let's continue. You say my career's really taken off and I couldn't I can't really use a baby. You have now sacrificed your child for fame, influence, and to be well known. You did the same thing that they did in the Bible, nothing is different. With that being said, there was always a consequence to the action. Now, we love to have this conversation. Well, Tiffany, God gave us free will, right? You agree with that? Mm -hmm. God gave us free will. For sure. The issue with free God will, it's a beautiful thing. We thank will. God for free will. The issue with the conversation of free will is that free will is not free. Just like evil covenants cost. Yeah. The, the, the devil wants you to think that walking into a covenant with him is not costy. It's not expensive it is but one of the beautiful one of the beautiful thing about god is he lays out his covenants precept by precept in the bible if you make covenant with me this is all the good that's going to happen if you break covenant with me this is all the bad that's going to happen the devil doesn't do that he wants you to go into covenant in a dream make you wake up forget all your dreams so you don't know what you did he wants you to have sex. He wants things to happen to you when you were a child that you forgot about. You can't even break the covenant. He wants you to, your parents to leave you so you don't even know what your family was into because you were adopted in foster care because the devil hides the covenant that you were in. With that being said, free will is very expensive because no matter what the choice you make, it's always a consequence to that choice that you have to pay for. With that being said, the Bible says that the wages of sin are death. Now, this is where the Quran and my understanding of the Bible kind of diverge. This person speaks of uh, where we agree, where, the, where I believe the Bible and the Quran agree, is the concept of uh, free will. She says free will is not free. In the Islamic paradigm, we say that you have limited free will, that the ultimate arbiter of your free will is Allah, that no, you have a, a degree of choice. But ultimately, what happens is the result of what Allah chooses. Is that, would you agree with that? Yeah. What summation? Allah decides, yeah. And so there's that. The other thing is, I I personally differ with the concept of the devil as a uh, someone who's a man, which is the way she speaks of it here, uh, as though the devil were a physical entity that approaches you and you actually, like we see on movies where you know you, you sign something and you're talking to somebody like that i see uh evil and i see i see demons as that i believe there is such a thing as demons uh i believe that the concept of the devil is the point where the human being uh becomes full of himself as he bleeds and he sees himself as not being subject to Allah's laws or universal laws, that he himself makes the laws and that his choice is unlimited and he can do whatever he wants without consequence. And in the Quran, Allah checks him on that. What do you say? Yeah, I say the same thing, um, that uh, these are really frequencies that we're talking about, frequencies that are registering uh, emotionally in us. Some of them are registering as uh, things that we think to do that we don't want anybody questioning us about you know we don't want anybody checking us about these particular ideas so there are no checks and balances on the way a demon or a devil or a shaitan as he's called in the crime there are no checks and balances on, on what he does because he's already declared himself as being correct even above and beyond what allah has to say so that's where we run into a real problem that's just a point of, of departure. Let that not take away from the point that she wants to make. Go ahead. The wages of sin are death. If you are having sex with somebody and that is not your husband or your wife, it is fornication, which we have agreed that it means idolatry, which is a sin. That means that you can expect nothing but death. Now you might not see physical death. Sometimes it's death of the relationship, death of me your mental sanity, death of your life, because now you got to do this by yourself because they're going to leave you. But most cases it's abortion. I don't want to do this. I don't like him or her anyway. I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to have to do this by myself. I'm going to kill this thing because that was the price you paid for your free will decision. That price did not come for free. 
What that means is now what's on your life is a spirit of abortion, or in other words, the demonic covenant with Moloch that you are now covenanted yourself to. Everything you touch. So this is, again, where I differ. And uh, Ben, you can say, you make what you do in that circumstance is you have misaligned yourself uh, with divine will. Allah's will for you is X, you decided to go Y. Um, the idea that uh, the sins that you have incurred there are somehow uh, outside of your control. I know that's a little tough one to, to explain. She'll go into a little bit further, um, but it's still that idea of the devil being somebody physical, like a, a person, like if you see Ghost Rider, the movie Ghost Rider is a perfect example of a person, the devil appearing in a person. What that person, what you're actually doing in that circumstance, as I see it, is you are dealing with the consequences of your choice. Right? As I say, the law of expediency and the law of unintended consequences. Uh, certainly, we agree the the Quran says that fornication is bad. And I don't know that it's so much of a law, you know, again, this this anthropomorphism, the idea of taking God and making God uh, a physical, create. I don't believe that man is created in the image of God. I believe that man created an image of God in his own, in his own way. He made God a man, right? And so, and the image that most people have of God is of somebody who is outside of you, who is generally white, who has, who's very big, very, very big, has a white beard and is just sitting there with his giant thumb waiting for you to mess up so he can squish you like a bug. <laughs> I, 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 I disagree <laughs> with all of that. I believe actions have consequences. And when you make the choice, you choose the consequences. Yeah. She's making another very important point here, though, about how we interpret what the scriptures are saying. And um, it's very interesting that she's describing the wages of sin as being death, but she's describing death on multiple levels. So death for her is not just the physical extinguishing of a physical life as it is in the case of an abortion, death for her, she said, is even the death of a relationship that when you sin, quote unquote, and I'll explain that word in just a moment, when you sin, some consequence has to be played out after that, that represents death, but not necessarily the death of an, of an individual or of a baby or anything like that. But she says, for instance, if you, if you decide to have uh, intercourse with somebody and you're not really committed to him or her, and a woman ends up getting pregnant and she's despondent. She really doesn't want to be pregnant. She might decide on an abortion or not. Or some women will go to even hate the child if they eventually go to hate the father of the child. You know, so she's a she's a, 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 a one parent person now. And she has to raise this child that she really never intended to have. And that child becomes an economic burden on her because he's not contributing. Uh, that child becomes a, like a kind of social pariah, you know, within her own family. They don't like the guy. They don't want you to bring the child over. Uh, some people might not want to help participate in you raising the child, although that's not true in every case, but worst case scenario. So now you have a situation where a, a lot of other kinds of relationships are being killed, if you will, are being put to death. You know, maybe you wanted to go back to school. Maybe you want to go back to high school, finish high school, get your high school diploma, maybe go into college, get some serious skills. Well, that dream has been killed. You see that ambition, that desire. Now, I can't do it now because I have to raise this child. So other things are metaphorically dying because we transgressed. And that's where you get to the word sin. People think sin means that I did something against God, I did something wrong, or I, you know, I did something evil. But the word sin actually traces back to a very ancient word that simply means to miss the mark. It's like it's like a, a you know bow and arrow, bow and arrow, you know, being aimed at a particular uh, target, but there's not enough light for you to really, you know, adequately connect with the target. So that's what that's saying. And because there's not enough light, 
That word sin is also the ancient name for the moon god. And as you know, when the moon is out, it does provide some light, but not adequate light. You wouldn't go out practicing archery in the dark. <laughs> so this is what we're talking about. People doing things uh, without enough light on the subject, without enough knowledge, not enough science of how this goes. If if, if she gets pregnant, what happens then? Are those discussions even being had? Now no, you... Not in the heat of passion. Yeah. And, and I would add to that in the Latin, sin, S-I-N, uh, also in Spanish, it means without. Yeah. And so I say without light. <laughs> without without thought to consequences, without proper judgment, etc. Got it. Touch is aborted. You're right at the brink of breakthrough True. and it has aborted itself. You are always starting things, but you never finish them. Well, Tiffany, I've never had an abortion. That sounds like me. Then your mother and father did. And guess what? The covenant still stands. Just because your mother and father died or your grandfather, parents, your parents died, it doesn't mean the covenant dies. The covenant is alive until you wake up and break the covenant. Free will is not free. So we love to have this conversation and it's sickening that believers and leaders are having a conversation that free will is something that is okay to do in the area of abortion. Because if that's the case, why don't you let these pedophiles have the free will to molest whoever they want to molest? Mm -hmm. Why are there laws put in place that they cannot do that? We have free will. We want to go with that argument. We also, why haven't you put the murderers back out? They have free will to kill whoever they want to kill. Let the chips fall where they may. So the conversation doesn't really make sense when you put all of that out on the table. Rapists, they should have free will to rape whoever they want to rape. Let them out of jail. Let them do their thing. Who are you to say it's wrong? Who are you to take the right away from a man who wants to rape a child, a woman, or another man? Who are you to do that? Let this person do what they want to do because they have the free will. You see how stupid that sounds? It sounds ridiculous. With that being said, does God care about babies? Let's go to the Bible. In the book of Luke chapter one, the Bible says that when Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, God says that this baby is filled with the Holy Ghost while he's in the womb. That means that in the womb, he is filled with the spirit of God. His identity was already set. He will not drink alcohol. He will turn fathers back to the sons, sons back to the fathers. This is what he will do. This was all said while he was in the womb. So in that, the corollary as I understand it is, that Allah, what they said, the spirit of God, we say that is Ruh. Yeah. Allah breathed of his Ruh, something of his spirit. You may translate that in some cases as his breath, but it's it was not alive before. It is alive now because something of the creator is in that, which is why uh, lab pregnancies and clones will never be true human beings, right? Clones will never be human beings because there is not Allah's ruh or God's ruh in that. That was something that man did. Now, some will say, well, how, if God is the creator of life and death and whatever it is lives, it must be because God had something to do with it. But there is no soul in that creature, whatever it is that was made. And we see this. People thought about this a long time ago. This is what Frankenstein is about. It was something that was created by man, given life by artificial means, but that has no soul. And what does it do? It is mis the, the creature is miserable. Uh, it goes about without a sense of right and wrong and kills. With no consequence. With no consequence. No moral conscience. Because it, it's not that something that is put into the human being by Allah. The creator. And, and look at a lot of the crimes that are being committed now, especially in some of these center cities, you know? where a lot of young people might be in a situation or they speak also about the illegal immigrants coming over and committing certain crimes, even as high as murder. You know, people are killing people just with no conscience whatsoever, stealing from each other with no kind of sense of, uh, you know, wrong, that this is wrong, you know? So we're talking about a spirit now that is actually engulfing many human beings around the planet, but especially here in the part of the world we're in. Well, what, what, what she's saying is, Moloch, I would say, is the absence of God consciousness. Yeah, it would be the same thing. Uh, Moloch was actually known as, as a creature um, who people would come to to sacrifice their children. They would they would give their children over to Moloch, who would then eat them, actually, if you can stand the thought. You know, so he was uh, one who would devour children. And that's not a new story in religion or in mythology. It, it, you see it in very 
play out in other kinds of uh, information. Uh, so we're not really talking about someone who is physically necessarily, although you got some demons in the world right now who are actually physically drinking the blood of, okay, I won't go there, but uh, Dracula is real. Well, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole thought of vampirism. Yeah. That's the whole, that's the whole concept of vampirism, sucking the life essence out of someone. Um, and especially of the children, which is another reason. Why the children? Well, it represents youth. It represents untainted energy, pure energy. Go. And that's what these demons feed on there is pure go. energy, which is something sidebar here. I could not understand for the life of me while why people who purport to believe in God, especially Muslims, and follow what the Quran says, how it is you could vote for somebody that supports transgenderism, how you could vote for somebody who supports the castration of children, which is to totally remove from that child uh, Allah's fitra, Allah, the nature which Allah placed in a child and what Allah placed in every human being. Mm -hmm. How can you support that or support somebody who supports that? I, I can't get that because where is your grounding in scripture for that? That's not in the Quran. Uh, that's not in any practice that I'm aware of, any sunnah or even any hadith that I'm aware of, yea, though I put no stock in hadith at all. Uh, the Quran is always the final arbiter of that. So uh, that's just a sidebar. We veer off the topic, but it's relevant to introduce that there because you'll see people, uh, women who are wearing kimars, who are totally wrapped up, who uh, will come out and will fight you to defend abortion and defend uh, uh, the, the Democratic candidate who supports all these other things. You're somebody who made a commercial with RuPaul's drag queens. RuPaul's drag queens. Huh? Transgender people, the whole pride thing. Person sat with them, was endorsed by them. And yet you're going to completely disregard everything that you were taught in your religion or or the book that you subscribe to. And pride today at the White House? Come on. Where they replaced the American flag with the, with the what do you call it? The LG. Yeah. I, I forget all of the letters they have, but... Just you know, since the rainbow, the rainbow, the play. rainbow thing. That to me is, is, but anyway, yeah, anyway, we digress. Let's continue. Let's take it to Jeremiah chapter one. He said, before you were formed, I sanctified you. Before you were in your mother's womb, I did that. Then when you got in your mother's womb, I ordained you a prophet. So what it sounds like is the agenda of genocide on babies. The agenda of genocide on babies, which means that if these, we'll just use those two examples. If John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost in, in the womb, and if Jeremiah was sanctified before he was in the womb and ordained as a prophet while he was in the womb, we have to consider those two people the church. Because God's ecclesia is not just the four walls of a church, it is called out ones. It is people that are God's church. With that being the case, there's got to be a reason why these people are hell-bent on killing the church in the womb. This is a genocide. This is a mass extermination. Anybody that is in agreement with abortion, I don't care whose free will it is, has now likened themselves unto Hitler. So I don't wow. care who you like or who you don't like, you have now become a murderer of God's children. How else do we know that this thing is important? to God. When you look in the new covenant and Jesus was getting ready to be born, you had a king on the scene named Herod. Now, this is very important here. Uh, the vast number of Planned Parenthood clinics, which offer easily accessible abortion, are located in African-American neighborhoods. The ethnic group, which has the largest number of abortions, African-Americans. Why are we killing our own children? Why are we doing that? Who benefits from that? I did a, uh, a video on that, which you can access, which we'll link below. Uh, even this candidate, as they dissect how it was that she lost the election, people forget that when the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, was in full swing, a mobile a mobile van, clinic. a mobile clinic, thank you, a mobile clinic 
uh, rolled over to the DNC and offered vasectomies and free abortions. On site. On site. And this is the can't. She wonders why someone who offers, who puts Cardi B, Megan the Stan Stallion, tweaking, twerking, 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 <laughs> twerking uh, as her calling card, which is, which again denigrates the, the office and the agency of women, reduces women to just a sexual creature with no respect for self, and then promotes abortion and uh, transgenderism. Does that not speak to genocide? Transgender people, uh, especially men transitioning to women, which is the largest number of transitions, these are people who can't have babies. So if they would stick to their guns and, and their beliefs that men should be with men sexually, they should marry uh, men, you know, uh, women should marry women. If they would stick strictly to those beliefs, let's say they were to cordage themselves off to a small island and we say, OK, well, you know, OK, do your thing. You know, we just don't want you intermingling in our particular of society, you know, influencing our children in, with that behavior. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. So if you do that, what's going to happen after 5, 10, 20 years? There won't be any of them left because they're not having babies. They're outside of Allah's fitra. And therefore, they have to su suffer the consequence, the death, if you will, of that particular sin, transgression, going away from the mark, moving away from the mark. You never hit the real mark. Which is amazing. Because this is, in my humble opinion, this is why they're migrating towards the children, teaching children in kindergarten, in elementary school about their sexual practices. Under, I don't support, quote unquote, straight people teaching sex to young children. Childhood is not about that. You can make a strong argument to introduce that once puberty sets in, which in this day and time is now, unfortunately, 9, 10, 11 years old. But no way, no how do kindergarten children, first, second, third grade, they have no business being sexualized. And especially with the kind of stuff that these people are putting forth. Mm -hmm. This is not natural womanhood. This is artificial, exaggerated, uh, caricature womanhood. It's insulting. At least that's that's my view. Yeah. And, you know, even in the Quran, Allah does not depict the people who lean towards the lesbianism or, or the gay life or whatever. He doesn't depict them as the enemy. When Allah speaks about the whole sexual behavior thing, he's speaking to a broad audience of humans because the average one of us is not supposed to be practicing those behaviors, even male to female or female to male because it could still lead to some very outstanding um, uh, problems in society when people don't know who their parent is, or especially the father. She's with this man, that man, and the other man, and she ends up pregnant. Now they got to figure out, you know, you've seen those stories, <laughs> those those those, uh, those television Orphan programs. dramas. Yeah, you know, we're going to determine, daddy? somebody's got to take a genetic test or whatever and determine who the baby is. Johnny, you're the baby. You know, but they got three dudes sitting up there. <laughs> Because all these three dudes done been with her in the last year, and she doesn't even know who she got pregnant by. So the Quran is not just speaking about the homosexual aspects of the transgression. It's speaking about the transgression of things that go against his fitrah, that go against the natural order that he created to keep order in society. And also, I think, again, sidebar, what adults choose to do behind closed doors is exclusively the choice and the province of those adults. When you have same-sex couples now having children, I think it's unfair to the child because now the child does not get the balance of what a man does and what a woman does. It's going to be all one or all the other in the sense of parenting. Another discussion, and again, no hatred towards the people that choose that. I simply say from this, even if you even if you're in a single parent household and the child is being raised, <clears throat> is being raised either by just the mother or just the father, the child is deprived of the balance of having that other, that other principle, masculine principle or feminine principle. They do not get 
the benefit of both. And isn't that normally why even if there are two females as lesbians, one tends to take on the role of the masculine, masculine principle, dress like a man. Sometimes they even take whatever it is to be able to grow a mustache, grow a beard. Mm-hmm. I think it was Cher. Uh, Cher-, Cher- yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, her daughter who actually went through the whole shebang. The whole and, transition and, and, process. Yeah. So again, that's another another subject for another day, yeah. but you thought it was relevant. Herod knew that there was a deliverer that was getting ready to be born. He did not know where that deliverer was. But guess why? Only God knows everything. The devil is not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. He needs you to tell him what's going on for him to know. So Herod knew that a deliverer was being born. He didn't know who or where the deliverer was. With that being said, God came to Joseph, Mary's husband, in a dream and said, King Herod's trying to kill Jesus. I need y'all to go to this other place until he's dead. Because Herod couldn't find the baby. He said, I need you all to kill all, was it boys specifically? Mm -hmm. All boys under the age of two years old. Kill all of them. That is why you see mass, uh, 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 this, this whole highlight on abortion right now. There is a deliverer that is getting ready to be born on this earth or they're already here. The devil knows it. They just don't know who it is or where it is right now. Wow. They don't know. So now you have this mass genocide of abortion under the guise of legal right. And as long as you get your favorite witch goddess entertainer to co-sign for the, pre- the, the president run up, runner up and they want to label it as just women's health care, then you're going to be blinded because the Bible says I'm also going to give them that hate truth over to a strong delusion. So you're going to hate the truth anyway. You're going to be under a strong delusion anyway. You're not going to realize that there is a deliverer that's going to be born. And to my last point, you have Moses, who was a deliverer of his generation. The Bible says in Exodus chapter one, they were looking to kill that child. They couldn't find out who it was. So the the person that was over that place, the king or whoever said, I need you to kill all the babies. And it was the midwives over Moses that kept him safe during that time because they heard God. So there has always been generation after generation after generation. If I'm not mistaken, and you can cite me on this, um, Einstein was in Germany during the Holocaust Mm. and they got him out. There's always a deliverer born that they're trying to kill. And until believers see the root of it, obviously we're all looking at trees and leaves and fruit and all of those things. And now I'm not holier than thou. I've had abortions, right? I understand now the revelation of abortions. That's why I speak out so against it. Now, other people use the, the, uh, the fight of, well, Tiffany, what about those that are raped? And what about those that already have a dead baby? Well, obviously they call it abortion. If you already have a dead baby in your womb, that's not an abortion. The baby's dead. It needs to be extracted out of you. That is not an abortion though. That is a dead baby yeah. that needs to come out. If you are raped, Unfortunately, that sucks. That is only about two to three percent of the cases of abortion. So they're trying to magnify this thing to be bigger than what it is. The truth is, it is the negligence of the 97 percent who is an idolatry, who want to have sex outside of marriage. And they are paying the price of that through the power of death. With that being said, even if a 10 year old or a 12 year old or a 13 year old or a 15 year old got raped, because you do not give yourself willingly over to somebody at that age. I don't care who you are. They got raped. They are not impregnated. Tiffany, what do you say? Shouldn't you have an abortion? The truth is no. Here's why. It is a spirit at work. If that child has an abortion, likely before the person was raped, before the child was raped, before the little girl was raped, there was already a series of atrocities on that bloodline that caused that to happen to that person. It is a habitual demonic pattern that needed to be broken. Because demonic covenants expire, they are looking to renew themselves after 20 years, 10 years, 70 years. And when it got to that little girl at 10 years old, it might have been the 69th year and it needed to renew. So let's get this little girl pregnant. Let's rape her because this is on the bloodline of all the people that raped and molested and sodomized. Now it's her turn because that spirit is on her. And most of you that can attest if you were raped, molested or had any type of incest, that is in the bloodline. Believe it or not, everybody doesn't have that in their bloodline. There are bloodlines that are never touched by this demonic spirit but it is a perpetual pattern because nobody stops it now this little girl is pregnant now you take her to the abortion clinic and guess what happens you have now renewed the covenant with Moloch Mm. and it has now surfaced in her life forever until she wakes up watches a podcast Mm. like this listen to us and say I need to break this and her children until you break it 
So that is why abortion and the conversation around it is so important to have amongst leaders and believers. And let me be the first to say, I think it's absolutely disgusting when you hear believers and leaders champion this desire to exterminate a people and have mass genocide of God's ecclesia. You are no better than Paul before he became Saul, who was a Hitler of his time, who was killing God's church. I don't care how many times you sit in church and I don't care how liberal you are, you are no better than Hitler himself because you have decided not to save those that could not save themselves. God charges us as believers to take care of the little ones that cannot take care of themselves, and you are disgusting to think that you shouldn't. And for those that think that we should not cry loud and spare not about it, Ezekiel chapter 3 tells us if they are under divine judgment and we do not warn them, the blood is on Tiffany and Bev's hands. So we don't care how you feel about it. No way. I will not be held under judgment for not telling you that you're wrong. Again, I've had my fair share of abortions. I understand it. I do not walk in condemnation because God has not only freed me from the curse that was upon me, but also I'm justified. It's just as if I've never had it. I have no residue of it on my life. The reason I share it is because I understand how powerful testimony is, that you can watch this and say, I've had abortions too. And if God can use Tiffany as powerfully as he's using her, that means that I shouldn't be condemning myself. Yeah, there's hope for me. That's the only reason I share my abortion. But Beth, take it away. And I'm wow. going to add this to We're your point. I'm going to add this to quick. your point. In the so there's a couple of things here. Number one, I I'm I would diverge from the speaker's <clears throat> position about generational curses. Uh, in Al Islam, it is said that no soul can bear the burdens of another. Uh, I don't believe that Jesus died for our sins. Uh, I don't believe that the sins or the bad deeds of the father are visited upon the son, et cetera, et cetera, provided that the son or the offspring do not follow and make the same decisions as the father. Uh, certainly, and are influenced by the same influences. Influenced by the same influences. Uh, children, of course, are not responsible up to a certain age uh, for their actions until they learn. they learn better. Uh, and children are a product of their environment. So I go back. I, I'm not 100% in agreement in that. Uh, the other concept is, yeah, at a point when a person does something wrong, as the speaker confesses here, uh, yeah, you, you're only responsible in al-Islam for what you know, for what you know and for what you understand. And when you ask Allah for forgiveness, then Allah forgives you. Now, if you persist in that same behavior, uh, then you also have to repent for that behavior. And what does repentance mean? Stop doing it. There's lots of circumstances uh, when a person is ignorant. And by ignorant, I don't mean stupid. I mean, ignorant in its classic sense means you're just not aware. Uh, who among us can say that they made decisions in their life which in the light of hindsight, you look at and say, how did I ever get with this person? What was I thinking when I made this decision and I actually did this particular thing? Hindsight's 2020. In the light of experience, you look back at it and say, ah, you know, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have made that decision. So nobody faults a person for doing that. But once you know better, you're required and you're obligated to do better. And then once you ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah is al-Ghafur, the most forgiving. So you're not required to labor under the sin, the quote unquote sins, or I should say the consequences of your previous behavior. If you know better, you do better. Yeah. There's a, a man named Dr. Bruce Lipton who speaks to these things, and uh, he deals with a subject called genetic determinism, uh, which was a belief held by most, I guess, most of the uh, medical community, that your genes determine the outcome of the things that happen in your life. You know, if your mother was this, if your mother was that, if your daddy was this, if your granddaddy was that, then you're actually inheriting those behaviors through your DNA. And Bruce Lipton did a monumental work uh, disproving that idea that they had once accepted as the truth. And uh, he shows that it is mostly what is going on in, as Karima said, in your environment. 
you know so if if i'm if i'm a diabetic for instance and uh my mother and father were diabetics and they say well that's the reason you're a diabetic because your mother and father were, were diabetics you know or maybe your grandparents before them were diabetics but no it's only because i'm growing up in the same environment the same eating habits the same you know things the same commercials i'm looking at the same meals that are being created or the same meals that were being created by my mother so she passes those ideas down to me when i have my own family i start feeding them you know frosted flakes and cookies for dinner hey guess what i'm going to be the next one with that but it's not that i inherited it through my genes is the point the environment the family circle all those things that i was witness to is really what created those and that's and that's an important thing for the african american uh to make a note of uh, you we have a lot of what i call slave ghosts uh we are victims if we choose to be of our programming uh even to use the word slave uh i don't like the word slave i i was my ancestors were captured and they were prisoners to different mindset altogether and to con to continue to to continue to labor under that burden <clears throat> that because you're of a certain ethnic group or because you're a certain color or because you're a certain gender that uh, you're going to be a victim and the people outside of you control you that's voluntary that's voluntary uh, at a certain point statistically there were many more slaves by orders of magnitude than there were slave owners and quote unquote white people. Yeah, at the time of the Emancipation Proclamation, there were many more slaves, people of color, than there were white people, people of lesser color. But we didn't, Harriet Tubman said it best. She said, I freed hundreds of slaves and I could have freed hundreds more if only they had known that they were slaves and the worst slavery is the belief in a false God. Now, I just want to be clear to make sure that the audience is clear. You're not saying that there's no such thing as forced labor. Or, oh, no, there or certainly forced is. Forced behavior. There certainly is. Okay. But, but the fact that Harriet Tubman escaped it, the fact that there were slave rebellions, this is not to say that it was easy. This is not to say that there were not consequences. This is not to say that making the choice to rebel against the circumstances of slavery, a forced servitude did not have horrendous consequences. That's not to say that. It is to say that the worst kind of slavery is mental slavery. This has been proven many times with elephants. When the elephant, is, well, I can tell you this also from a, a, a common belief among the Jesuits. If you give they would say, give me a child and let me keep that child until age seven. And at, after that point, they control the psychology of the person. So the, the challenge for us as descendants of uh, captured Africans is to stop laboring under the belief that anybody outside of the creator controls you. Right? Right? Is that easy? No. Is it terrifying? Absolutely. But that's the only freedom, the true freedom that you have. And that is the freedom of your thoughts and the freedom of your beliefs and the freedom to free yourself from limiting beliefs. And I guess that's in line with what the Quran says when it says that um, oppression is worse than slaughter, than outright slaughter. Oppression. Because oppression now has to do with your fears your anxieties, trauma that may have been, you know, um, put upon the person. Uh, and the results of that can actually be worse than had the person actually been put to death or, That's right. or, or died. And many of us enslave ourselves. Uh, and there's a, I do not know the, the author of the saying, but it says the one who overcomes his fears has overcome failure. All right. United States estimates indicate approximately 900
and 30,160 abortions occurred in 2020, wow. averaging around 2,548 abortions per day. That's about four in 10 unintended pregnancies end in abortion. That's correct. And let me say this again. There is no way that abortion is about health care. I don't care how many times you want to say it. I don't care if you blue, black, white, or purple. Abortion is the murder of an innocent child. Abortion is, a, is the murder of a child that God created for you. You do not have the right to take a, a life that God gave. And for those of you that say, well, what are you supposed to do then if you get pregnant? Probably stop having sex. Mm -hmm. You should probably stop being irresponsible with your body anyway because the man you having sex with don't want you no way or he would have married you let's be clear mm. you should probably stop sinning so how about you take personal responsibility for your life stop putting yourself in those positions and stop having these babies and stop putting yourself in these positions but let's be very clear health care is not abortion abortion is murder and you are hitler if you agree with it honestly that's, I was, that's the I main was two things to you. it's the health care and it women's rights that's the the, the way they, the they way, try to the dress it up it. and i was talking to you about that as well ryan because we had an abortion, abortion conversation earlier today and it's right you know you talk about what you Emotion. stated prior about cause and effect and we have free will but we don't have control over the effect and essentially abortion is us trying to uh change god's effects his circumstance that he already created this is what happens when you have sex mm -hmm. and we're trying to put our own will mm -hmm. impose our own will on what can happen which is pretty much going against directly against what God here has already ordained. You can, get as, really many, you can it, get as many. There's no cap on it. It's not. If everybody is watching the, the cheering that they did, whether you agree with us or not, right? Just stop for a second and say, why are they cheering like that? That's what I said. Run that back real quick. Yeah, just it's, 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 uh, drop it's your eerie. opinions, drop right? your feelings, yeah. and just ask yourself, Abortion rights advocates why are they cheering like this? It's sick. Dude it's is jumping up and down. You can cut it, Lano. You can cut it. It's group hugs, dudes yes. jumping up and down. A couple but of them dudes, I don't even think they're even trying to have babies. If you have sagging skin, don't eat bananas. I'm a 50-year-old plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. People will never believe how old I am. So I decided to share my secrets to getting smooth skin, minimizing sagging and maintaining. It's total witchcraft, but let's get into health care, okay? If you go and you look at statistics of women who have abortions, a woman's chance of getting breast cancer increases 150 times if she's had an abortion. These are medical statistics that never get told. Also, and the reason she does, because death has come into the womb. Death Ooh, has entered right. into her. Oh, and man. so cancer is a very prevalent disease, which they never tell about. Please speak on that. Repeat well, what she said. Well, Make what, sure it's what I heard. What she said is that a woman who has abortions increases her risk of breast cancer. I think she said 198 mm percent. -hmm. I can't speak to that, to the truth or the lack thereof of that statistic since I have not heard that. I haven't researched it, so I'm not going to say it's true or it's not true. Uh, what I can say is that the more abortions a person has, the greater the risk of cervical incompetence. What does that mean? Uh, to do an abortion, and I'm not speaking now of medical abortion, which is the pill where the body expels it on its own. When a person has a what they call a therapeutic or an interventional abortion, there is the artificial dilation of the cervix. The cervix being the door of the womb through which sperm enters and through which a baby exits. It, by nature, is supposed to be absolutely tight. It's got a, a front door that's locked and it's got an, in, an inside door that's locked. In order for there to, in order to take the baby out artificially, you have to put something in there to dilate it. Uh, and then you have to open it artificially so that you can reach in there and pull the baby's parts out. That shows you how disgusting the whole procedure is. You're going to dismember a living baby mm -hmm. and take the baby out. So that artificial prying open, prying open of a womb that was intended to, to be closed in nature, the more times you do that, uh, the more times you risk that it actually will not stay shut when you want it to. So that's just uh, uh, mm -hmm. something I, I can't say about the breast cancer part about it, mm -hmm. because I just don't know enough to say. Yeah. About the emotional aspect of it, depression and, and all those other things. Uh, I shared a story with you yesterday about the woman who uh, we ministered to that had had an abortion and 
she kept losing baby after baby after baby. So they don't tell you that either, that once you've had an abortion, your chances of never being able to have a baby, or if you do get pregnant, you'll probably miscarry it. They don't tell you the high statistics of that. I wouldn't say you're probably miscarry. I would say that there's an increased chance that you can miscarry. And then another thing happens when an abortion is done prior to 12 weeks. Uh, those kinds of abortions are called suction abortions, uh, where they dilate the cervix, right? And then they put a tube in there called a cannula. And then they attach suction to that cannula, which is a giant straw. And then they suck the baby out and then they scrape the inside of the uterus to remove all the tissue that would otherwise sustain the pregnancy. And sometimes in the course of doing that, a person can be unnecessarily vigorous uh, with that scraping and that suction. Uh, you might also hear of it as a DNC, a dilation and curatage. Curatage means scraping. And sometimes uh, they can scar the lining of the uterus. Or they can, as she said, um, be so vigorous or so many times with that dilation that now the cervix will not remain closed and the woman is unable to successfully carry pregnancies to term. Wow. Yeah, so it's they make it as though there's no consequence. See the procedure, see the, uh, the uh, paradigm here. It's action without consequence. Have the abortion, don't worry about it. You'll get over the emotional aspects of it and you recover from the physical parts of it like nothing happens no that is not the case there is no free lunch there is no actions without consequences it just doesn't work that way mm. you make the choice you choose the consequences there it goes talk about health care all of that is part of your health mm. so i ministered to a woman one time who I was training some people on, on deliverance, and they were doing deliverance on a woman who had had an abortion. They had called death out of her and, you know, the breast cancer, all of that kind of stuff out of her, and they weren't getting her free. And this is what I was talking about, the captivity, where her soul had fragmented and uh, was basically in trauma from, and that's another thing they don't tell you, is the trauma mm -hmm. women go through as that baby is being taken from them. But anyway, so... I went over to her and she felt like she, I think she had seven miscarriages. Wow. And so she felt God was punishing her because of the miscarriages. God doesn't punish you. Amen. That is the result, again, of our choices. Amen. And when we make a wrong choice, we put ourselves in the hands of the one that comes mm -hmm. to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what the enemy does. And then he tries to blame it on God. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, I said, okay, I knew where she was. She was trapped in that her soul was trapped. The Bible talks about the soul being fragmented, the soul being front, uh, shattered, and also the soul to being torn in pieces. And that, and also trauma. I told you about that. How psychiatrists will say there, when you go through trauma, there's a portion of your life that stays stuck. Because of the trauma she went through, I don't know how many abortions she'd had. She was stuck there in the abortion clinic. So I told her, I said, close your eyes, and we're going to get up and come out of there. So I started having her say by faith I'm going to come out of that abortion clinic and then we got up and walked her out and when we began to walk, walk her out she began to wail and wail she was so broken over the babies that she never was able to hold because she had miscarried and miscarried that it was so sad we all began to weep with her and so we kept walking her out and I said tell me when you're out of that abortion clinic she finally said Bev I'm out and because Jesus is the healer of the broken person, we ask God then at that point to reintegrate that broken young woman back into her full soul and reintegrate her and grow her up. And she said when we got done, she said, Bev, I could hear the sounds of the sucking machine and I could smell the smells of the mm. abortion clinic. Oh, That's how real. See, what they don't... P doctors don't tell you is there's a spirit realm also now these people who are having a good old time right which is nothing but the occult and they want the sacrifice of babies because they want the most innocent and the highest blood that you can offer is the son, is the blood of the innocent 
and the little children. And that is why they want the blood of these babies. It is a known fact that blood of these aborted babies is drank at at many at many of your Hollywood studios when they they do rituals they sacrifice all over even in um, governmental places which nobody likes to tell that but they drink the blood of these babies from these aborted clinics they don't tell now an interesting thing to note here is that abortion is an industry I, I you could argue or you could debate about the actual drinking of the blood part. I can tell you that abortion is a multi-million dollar industry and that when a woman has an abortion, she signs a consent. And in that consent, she allows for the what's called the products of conception. That means the aborted fetus, the aborted baby, to be disposed of as the provider or the hospital or the clinic or whatever the agency pro- providing the who's performing the abortion should desire to do and frequently those products are sold sold to companies that use them for research use them for research so uh keep that in mind now we're not even going to talk about organ harvesting that's a whole nother discussion about which there's a great deal of debate and a great deal of controversy. Uh, I say that it's real. We know that such exists and that this whole kind, the reason that in my mind, so all my humble opinion, uh, in my mind that vampirism has persisted as long as it has in culture as what they would say is a myth is because there's always truth to every myth, there is truth. It's a generalization. It's an embellishment upon something that actually happened somewhere sometime, just like we know that Dracula is actually was a person named Vlad the Destroyer who actually did live in a place called Pennsylvania. Transylvania. Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive us, you Pennsylvanians. Excuse us. Excuse <laughs> us. Uh, 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 at Transylvania, which is in the Carpathian Mountains, and he was a murderer, a vile murderer. That Vlad the Impaler, they used to call him. So all these things do, in fact, have truth. Uh, again, there was also, look up adrenochrome. Look up adrenochrome. We won't go into it here, but just look it up. Tell you that kind of stuff. They also drink the blood of these baby, these little children that are being either sex trafficked. You know, we have three hundred thousand children that they cannot account for that cross the border. Wow. Where the are Harris, they? Right. They're either Biden sex trafficked or they're dead. Wow. One or the other. Okay, they've been probably used in rituals. Who knows? But so you better look at really what is behind. Amazing. What is the real root of this kind of a sacrifice? What is the demand of this God that says, I want blood and I want to destroy a generation of deliverers that are here? Because we we are in an hour right now. And I, I told you this the other day, too, where I ministered to a woman we, uh, that that uh, I believe we're in the last days without a doubt with the stuff going on. But I could go for hours. Let, let me tell you this. Go to Washington, D.C., sometime and look at all the Freemason Mason stuff that's structured all over there. Freemasonry is nothing but total uh, witchcraft and occult. The first thing that went up in um, Washington, D.C. was a Washington monument that is a Freemason obelisk. So our whole government there, that whole city is based on occult practices, okay? So you have to look at the occult influence behind these things. But I ministered to a woman from Africa a few years ago, and and she told me, she said, Bevan, it was actually during the 2020 elec- election, and there were people, entertainers, and uh, other witches and people in governmental positions going over to Africa to learn how to do, um, go to these witch doctors and learn how to do uh, ancestral magic and other forms of witchcraft in order to take the souls of babies and and put them in amulets 
And so that's another thing altogether. How do you fragment a soul? Well, the world already diagnoses it as disassociated disorder, but it's the soul being trapped. And she said the reason they were doing that is they said that they had a window of time that they had to take the dispensation we are in right now and get quickly get it shifted to this next dispensation. What is the next dispensation we're going to go into? The dispensation of the Antichrist. So they're trying to skip something in between here mm-hmm. because they're trying. So what are we promised in here after this dispensation? Revival. Mm-hmm. Revival. And they're trying to skip and, that. Yes, and they're trying to jump us out of the revival into this next dispensation to release do you know we're already working on a one world government we're already working on a one world health system all of it everything is coming into play they know exactly what they're doing when the democrat the dnc did their thing in chicago and everybody knows it was wide open they DNC, had an ab- right? mobile yeah. abortion clinic wow so what did they do offered blood sacrifices as they did because let's look at it for what it really is it isn't women's rights it's blood sacrificing for molech Mm -hmm. for for the for lucifer for the antichrist so that they because they know they get power just like when they say that they do voodoo and these people do the animals and they eat the animals to get the power the more that you can take a pure blood like a baby and offer it's going to give them more power so this woman said we're what they're trying to do is shift us from this dispensation into the next one they said we only have a window of time to do it that's why they're working so hard that's why so much of this it's why massive push of women's rights it's not women's rights it's massive push of murder babies murder babies murder babies but they're trying to put it under women's rights so that they can make it the whited sepulchers do you know jesus said you hypocrites you whitewashed sepulchers what is that meaning we look good on the outside but we're dead on the inside Mm -hmm. and so look at what's being pushed like this is all okay it's women's rights no it's murder it's murder and it's time the church who who who's like uh elijah said to to the prophet or to the israelites why do you halt and limp between two opinions? If God is God, serve him. But if Baal is your God, go sue for him. So in other words, if you're a Christian, serve God and live by his standards. If not, then go ahead and be an unbeliever. Go ahead and do those things. But don't try to call yourself a Christian and live contrary to the word of God. Number one, as Muslims and as students and uh, uh, followers of the Quran, we are obligated to study the previous scriptures, the Torah, the Psalms. We are obligated to become familiar with those. So I see more and more the similarities between what the teachings of Jesus were, uh, Jesus being a teacher, Jesus being a messenger of scripture, uh, the people who are sincere in their worship of God as they know God. Uh, We have much that we can study, much that we believe in common. And I believe that there's peace and harmony when we focus on the things that bring us together much more than the things that separate us. I begin to sound like Kamala now, right? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But in that, uh, she, she was speaking truth. So uh, that was, there There you have it. We've kept your attention for over an hour now. I hope we've kept your attention. And uh, we just wanted to invite you to the kinds of things that Instructor Bill Al and I do uh, during our, our leisure time. We, we study. We constantly study. And uh, this is us sharing our opinions with you on this particular piece of information. We hope that you get value from it. And if you do, by all means, share it with other people who might be of like mind. And uh, especially if you do, drop us a line and let us know what you think. In the comments box below. In the comments box, comments box below. Sir. And we will continue to have these conversations, hopefully on a weekly basis. Uh, if, we, if we show enough interest in it, then certainly we're going to feel obligated to keep the information coming. All right, then. So thank all of you. Thank you. From the Benal household. 
And uh, we greet you with the greetings of peace that obligates each and every one of us to keep the peace. Salam on Ali. Salam on Ali.